Okay, good evening. Are you all excited? Yeah, good. Term. So anyway, uh, I will do a teach path for chapter 13, 14, and 15, right? So uh, apparently this chapter is important because when you work as future nurses, you will be dealing with patients who may suffer from nervous system disorders. And example with that of the a patient with a stroke, we're in half of the body is paralyzed because the problem is in the brain, right? So in, in chapter 13, we deal with neural tissues and how the nervous system is classified. So whenever we say central nervous system, what is involved there? Okay, so nervous system can either be CNS or PNS. CNS stands for central nervous system. On the other hand, PNS stands for peripheral nervous system. So whenever we say central nervous system, you're dealing with what? Brain and spinal cord. On the other hand, when we're dealing with the peripheral nervous system, what are we dealing with? Peripheral nervous system. If the central nervous system deals with the brain and spinal cord, what would be classified for the peripheral nervous system? Outside yes? Outside the nerve, central nervous system. Outside the central nervous system. Can you be more specific than that? So for example, if you did the brain here, spinal cord here, which one would be the peripheral nervous system? Anybody? Spinal nerve. What? Spinal nerve. Spinal nerve. Where did they come from? From spine. From where? Where do they arise from? Where do they come from? From spinal cord. Oh, of course. That's why it's called spinal cord. Don't you love anatomy? <laughs> How many of you love anatomy? All of us should love. That's a foundation of nursing. A smart nurse is good in anatomy. An incompetent nurse does not know his anatomy. And she will not pass a nursing board exam. Why is it called spinal nerve? Because they come from where? Spinal cord. How many pairs of spinal nerve do we have? Huh? How many? 31 pairs, right? On the other hand, what will arise from the brain? Cranial nerves. Cranial nerves. There you go. Cranial nerves, 12, and then how many spinal nerves? 31 pairs, and 12 pairs of cranial nerves. So what do most people say? Or what do most people do and say? If I ask them what includes the peripheral nerves, they would always say well, anything outside the central nervous system because that is what is found in the book. So that is not what we need you to know. You want to be more specific than that. What it simply means is that most of the time in the PowerPoint slides, in one slide there it says everything that's outside what? Spinal cord. Spinal cord in the brain. But if I ask you which one, you don't know the answer because you practically memorized the power put without understanding, right? So when you say outside the brain, the answer would be what? Cranial nerves. What does cranial mean? Pertaining to the brain, the skull, right? Cranium, right? And spinal nerves, as we said, refers to the nerves coming from where? Spinal cord. So these two structures, brain, spinal cord, are part of the central nervous system. While your cranial nerves and spinal nerves are part of what we call peripheral nervous system. Do you understand? Now, what is another word for nerve cell? Neurons. 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 Very good. The neuron is a nerve cell. It has a dendrite, an cell body, and what? An axon. Dendrite carries nerve impulse to the cell body. The cell body, just like any typical cell, does it contain a nucleus? Does it contain your mitochondria and the plasmic reticulum? Most both are up. Yes, because it's a, it's a cell. And then the axon carries the nerve impulse where? Away from the cell body, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what is a struct or cell that supports the new one. Neuroglia, right? 
So neuroglia versus neuron, is there a difference? If there is, which one is a nerve cell? Neuron. Which one will transmit the nerve impulse? Has everybody signed the attendance here for review? Yes. No. So this one transmits what? Impulse. The neuron impulse or nerve impulses. What about the neuroglial cells? Do they transmit the nerve impulse? No, no they don't. They only what? Support. Support the neurons. And we will elaborate later. Okay? Is it that clear, class? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to neuroglial cells, some of them are found where? Some are so good? Some in the brain. Under neuroglial cells, some of them can be found in the mm -hmm. central nervous system, some will be peripheral nervous system. Under peripheral nervous system, what are the examples given there? What is it? Is it one or is van? It's van. Why is it van? It's German. How many of you speak German here? Am I the only one who speaks German? Zwan, Volkswagen. Those are the only two words I know. Or Achtung. If you're watching all those German movies, you know? World War II, Achtung. It's van. And what's the other one? Satellite. So this is what, I remember I mentioned this to this, what you call a concept map, a concept map. A concept map is an idea map. An idea map is a map designed to make you learn better in a more organized manner so that your brain will not be like a what? What is that there? A trust kind of information. You want your brain to be very, very sharp. You want your brain to be able to cut a piece of paper there. Can your brain cut that piece of paper? Or is not. I'm talking about a sharp mind, a smart mind, not dull. When you have a dull knife, can you cut? No. I want you to have the sharpest minds in the world. And one way of doing that is coming up with what we call a what? <coughs> a concept map. Like what I'm doing here, right? So when you do this at home, do this without looking at your notes, without looking at your books. And the only way to come up with what, short-term or long-term memory? Long -term. We want our students to develop short-term or long-term? Long you want a short-term memory? You know that answer today and tomorrow you forget. Why? Because what did you do? Huh? You're not encoding. What? You're not encoding your memory. You cram. What is cramming? Studying last night and Saturday and Sunday, right? Okay, now. In one or two words, what is the role of a Zvan cell? What? Myelination. Myelination. Very good. Of what? Absolutely. Peripheral nerve, right? What about the satellite cell? Where do you find them? In the ganglia. In the ganglia. Very good. And what is a ganglia? Or ganglia? A bundle of? Neuron cell bodies. Exactly. Cell bodies that are a bundle. Okay? Now what exactly, so if this were, let's, let's go to the, so when you say myelination, if this were the dendrite, cell body like this, accent like that, dendrite, cell body, accent. Can you still see me? Pretend this is with the myelin, what is myelin made of? What is the chemical substance that the myelin is made of? I mean, one? What, yes? Fat. Very good. What's another word for fat? Lipid. Liposuction. What is lipo? Fat. Removal of what? Is this fat? So cute. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one that will kill me, why? What will happen to the excess fat here? They will deposit where? In the coronary arteries of my heart and I will die today. I'm just kidding, of course not. Just finish finished the exam first and I die, it's fine. So I passed, I submit the paper. Will not be knocking on my coffin. Where is your midterm exam result, Dr. Gamo? I'm already dead. I'm just joking. 
Okay, lipid or fat? And why is it that myelin is important in the nervous system? What does it do? What does myelin do? Huh? Speeds up what? Conduction of the nerve impulse, right? How? How? How does it speed up the conduction of the nerve impulse? Do, do, do you understand what they're trying to drive at here? You may know the answer, but you have to know what is why, where, how. So I said ask what? You answered myelin. What does it do? Speed up conduction. How? Does anybody know? Yes, anyone? Don't be afraid to answer. This is a free country. All answers are correct, unless I say it's wrong. And don't be afraid to be, and don't laugh at your classmates if they're there. Yes? Okay, anybody else? I will, I will, I'll tell you what is the answer, but uh, anybody else? Okay, let us see. It travels from node to node, so it's quicker. Okay, it's called the node of what? Oh, right. Nodes of what? Does the nodes have myelin? No. no. They do not contain what? No. 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 Myelin. Node. Nodes. Nodes. Okay. Let's pretend this is the cell body. This is the axon, and this is what? The dendrites. Cell body, the axon, away from the cell body. Look at me. If this were Dr. Guapo, a gamo. <laughs> Why are you smiling at Guapo? What did you say? Guapo means what? Cute. Cute. <laughs> what is Guapo? Thank you so much. <laughs> the only person who said I'm guapo or handsome was my mom. Not even my wife. My wife never told me I was handsome, so. She got married to me. Up to now, she hasn't told me I was handsome. Anyway, I'm just joking, of course. She doesn't have to say it. I already know. <laughs> okay, if this were Dr. Gamo representing the nerve impulse without the myelin, look at me now. On top of the axon. On the other hand, in the presence of myelin, which is lipid or fat, the nerve impulse will what? Jump. Will jump from nerve impulse. Will jump from one node of runway to the next. So which one is faster? Without the myelin or with the myelin? Obviously, it is what? The one in the mind. You understand? And therefore, it's important that we know that myelin and axon are faster. Okay? Do you understand? Now, but no, do not what? No to run VA. Why run VA? It's French. Why is van? German. Okay? Now, under a central nervous system, which one will produce the myelin? Which one is important for the blood-brain barrier? So if this were already a quick exam, you would have two questions with two correct answers, right? Amazing! Oligo? Myelin. Where? Brain and spinal cord? Astro? Blood? Brain barrier. What does BBB stand for? Why do you think I just put BBB there? I want to what? Save on what? Save on the ink. Save on ATP. Energy. I have to write the word broad brain barrier. I'm going to waste my time. What else? There are four. Micro. What does micro mean? Small. What kind of? Small glial cell, and that's the other one. Uh, and it'll be seen as What? 
Yes. And what is the epidemic? Yes. For ventricles. Huh? Yes, sir. In ventricles, yes, sir. So it contains what? It produces what? CSS. Yes, and CSS stands for what? Cerebrospinal. Yes, so what do you think I wrote in this concept map? Did I write only the important words that you need to remember? Yes. See, if I say produces myelin in the peripheral nerves, answer would be what? If I say produce myelin in the brain and spinal cord, the answer would be what? So both of them produce myelin, but the location is different. Brain, bang! Oligodental side, bang! You understand? Hi. My name is brain, myelin. What is your name? Oligodental side. Hi. My name is myelin, peripheral nerves. What is your name? Is it Kimberly or Sandy? The answer is actually in front of you, Sandy. <laughs> Take your time, don't be afraid, don't, don't mind those people. Can you, can you read the what? Can you have a pair of glasses, right? What is that word? Myelin. What is that word? Myelin. What is this word below? Can you read that? <laughs> Who wrote that? <laughs> now it's my fault. <laughs> okay. And I used to write in the chart the nurse. Dr. Gamo, I can't understand your handwriting. You think the last I can't understand the handwriting too, no? <laughs> So now, if I ask you now, which one produces myelin in the peripheral nerves? Sunday? What's that? Are you Sunday? Are you going to take the nursing board itself for her? And what is your name? Brianna. Brianna? You better be with her when you take the nursing board itself, okay? You better be whispering to her. You hear what she said? Uh, what is it here, there, uh, Sandy? What letter is that, Sandy? P. P. What is this? N. What is that? S. And what is PNS, Sandy? This so what's the answer now? What produces the myelin in the peripheral nerve, Sandy? What cell? It's fine. It's okay. I think you need to maybe change your glass a little bit so you can see better. Uh, when was the last time you had your glasses? Last year. Last year. Uh, double check it again, okay? Because it's actually there Sunday. This one, myelin, peripheral nerves. I'm actually converting this to a question. Now, where do you find the neural nerves of the satellite? I'm giving you a damn truth. <laughs> <laughs> OMG for Dr. G. Where do you find the satellite cells? Ganglia. And what is the ganglia? Neural cell a collection. Cell of cell bodies, okay? If I say, hi, my name is blood-brain barrier, brain, what would that be? Astro astro what is your name? Astrocytes. Yeah, hi, my name is Astrocytes, what is your name? It's so easy, right? Should get a perfect score in my exams. <laughs> Every time you take an exam, you be excited, oh my God! I know everything that Dr. Gummy will ask me. I should get a perfect score here, right? Okay. Now, when we're dealing with this word, the vesicular synapse. What is a synapse? A junction between a nerve cell and another cell with dendrite and axon. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's the cell body here, axon here, dendrite, cell body here, axon there. In a vesicular type of synapse, you have vesicles. What do the vesicles contain? Neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters, right? So vesicular vesicles are found at the tip of your accents. Vesicular synapse. A synapse is what? Chemical. A junction between one neuron and another neuron, or a neuron in a muscle or effector cell. And what is found inside here? Neural trans meters. Such as dopamine, ACAs or acetylcholine, adrenaline, 
otherwise known as epi, noradrenaline or known as norepi, sero, tronin, and gaba, which means gamma, butyric acid. So, when the nerve impulse travel here, you go there, the neurotransmitter is like a what? FedEx guy. What does a FedEx guy do? Transmit what? Bring the what? Packet to your what? To your house. What do you find here in the dendrite? Receptors. Receptors. So if it's dopamine, it's dopaminergic receptor. If it's acetylcholine, it's cholinergic receptor. Serotonic receptors. Adrenaline, adrenergic receptor. So the nerve impulse travels here. And then, what will the neurotransmitter do? Carry the nerve impulse to where? The receptor? Via the synaptic cleft. What is a cleft? Space. Synaptic cleft, space. These neurotransmitters released here in the cleft, it carries the nerve impulse and it attaches to where? Very specific receptors. So in other words, if it's dopamine, it has to be dopaminergic receptor, just like the key. I need to be able to open the door with the right key. And then what happens now? It travels here, there is a wave of depolarization. Goes here, goes here, and then the same thing happens, right? What happens if you do not have enough of dopamine? You develop what? Parkinson's disease. Now, does anybody know Muhammad Ali? Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali was known to be what Cassius Clay before he became Muslim and became Muhammad Ali. He's my idol. I know him, but he doesn't know me. <laughs> Besides, he's already dead. Look oh. like a butterfly, and then what? Stay like a bee. But with repeated trauma to his head, damaging his basal ganglia and substantia nigra, he ended up developing what? Parkinson's disease. He has tremors. He cannot control his movements because this particular neurotransmitter is what? Inhibitory. He has Brady. What is Brady? Slow. Kinesia means movement. Like doing what? Tai Chi. And he has what? No facial expression. When Muhammad Ali, at the peak of his career in 1973, he went home to the I come from the Philippines, and he was fighting with Joe Fraser. Every time you see him on television, I'm the greatest. Thriller in Manila against the gorilla. Who was the gorilla? Joe Fraser. He says he's handsome, just like me. Okay. But when he suffered from Parkinson's disease. Mask, you know what's a mask? M-A-S-K, facies means facial expression, F-A-C-I-E-S. They also call it amphibian stare or reptilian stare. Have you ever seen a frog in the pond? What do they do? Do they blink? No, they don't. Do they laugh as well? Why, because if the fly or mosquito passes by, Okay, what about if you lack serotonin? You develop what? Depression. Have you ever heard of clinical depression? When people are depressed, what do they do? They kill themselves, suicidal tendencies. How do you know the patient is depressed? Well, they do not like to eat, they have lost their appetite, they do not cooperate with you. And when you look at them, they appear to be like this, right? Now, what drug can we give them? Antidepressant, like, how, have you heard of Prozac? Prozac, manufactured by Jay Gamma Industries? No, you're joking. I have a dream. I'll get the raw material from India and China and repackage here, now somebody in the border. Cheap label. You give them Prozac, so after doing this, give them Prozac, I feel good. Because it's an antidepressant. And you will learn the mechanism there in pharmacology. So is anatomy and physiology the basics, basis for medicine and nursing? 
Yes, it is. If you do not know this, then you should not be in nursing. Because you have to know what drugs we give. So what do you think we give these patients with Parkinson's? Dopamine. Yeah, okay, levodopa, dopamine. dopamine. Don't you love anatomy and physiology? The patient lacks this, what do we give them? Yes. Levodopamine. The problem is that this drug is only good for three months. After three months, they don't work. So we're still doing a lot of research at the J. Gamma Foundation Research. Yes, we are. Trying to find out what exactly is wrong with these patients. Hopefully with better PET scans, positive emission tomography, we can find the answer. Remember, remember Michael J. Fox? Is he suffering from Parkinson's? Is he a boxer? So the mechanism of damage to the basal ganglia is different. And I have a theory called the Gamotion theory that may have suffered from encephalitis through a virus, damaging that part of the brain that stores and produces cero, uh, dopamine, which happens to be the basal ganglia and the substantia nigra. Don't worry, we'll talk about this next week. What about serotonin, the same thing? We don't give serotonin, but we give them what? SSRI. Now what is that? Tell me. Serotonin is reuptake. Reuptake, because when, when the serotonin is released, reuptake means to go back. We don't want them to go back, they want it to what? remain there to have high levels of serotonin. Serotonin reuptake inhibitor. So this drug, Prozac, will do that. We want to have high levels of serotonin particularly in the cleft, which is correct. Are you an LVN? That's the reason why they have a better advantage over you guys if you are not an LVN. But the playing field will be the same in the moment you go to core nursing, right? Okay, do you understand? Now, for example, adrenergic receptors. Adrenaline. What does adrenaline do to your heart rate? Right. And if you increase your heart rate, what will be the effect on your blood pressure? It goes up. So, if I say beta adrenergic blocker, that means it's a drug that will attach to the receptor. So when the adrenaline is released, can it attach to the receptor? No, it cannot. It's a beta adrenergic blocker or beta blocker. Now, because doctors and nurses are lazy, do we still have to say adrenergic, not anymore? We just, what do we say? We just say what? Plain and simple beta blocker, but it actually means what? Beta adrenergic or sympathetic blocker, which means it's supposed to what? increase your heart rate if it is simple adrenaline, but because you block adrenaline, what will be the effect on heart rate? If you block, the receptor is here. So these drugs will attach to the receptor, therefore the adrenaline will no longer attach what happens to the heart rate if you give a blocker, decrease. beta blocker? Decrease heart, decrease heart rate, decrease what? In other words, there is nothing that you cannot answer in nursing if you know your anatomy and physiology. You can actually perfect your exam in the nursing board exam. You understand? Am I still good with my friend? And when I do a review nurse, nursing class, people are like, oh my God, Dr. Gamble, there's so many drugs. Thousands and thousands of them, but you have to be smart. You look at patterns in life. Most, if not all of these beta blockers, they end with what? L-O-L, laugh out loud. Such as, what? Atenolol, propranolol, Atendolol or metoprolol and gamolol. <laughs> you have not heard about gamolol? Where do you think was this manufactured? Here in Tijuana. What company? J. Gamo Industries. Name after me. Before I die, I told my kids I want to be remembered. Gamolol. No, I'm just kidding. So if you're taking a nursing board exam, and you're given a choice of drug to give a patient with hypertension or elevated blood pressure, and one of the answers has LOL at suffix, could it be the possible answer for antihypertension? Do you understand? So you don't have to memorize all this olo, 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 you know? You understand? Now, so we talked about this. Now let's move on to the spinal cord. Where does the spinal cord end? Level of what? Level L1, L2. 
The spinal cord passes to the foramen magnum. Is it an extension of the brain? Yes, it is. That's why it's called part of the central nervous system, correct? Okay. And the spinal cord, as we said, has 31 spinal nerves coming out from them. It, it comes out where? In the intervertebral what? Foramina. Remember that? In the spinal column, the bone. So whenever we say spinal column or vertebral column, you think of bone. When I say spinal cord, it's made up of what? Nervous tissue. Which part? Central nervous system. Right? Okay. If this were the spinal cord, it's protected by what? The spinal column, then what? The meninges, just like the brain. Skull, meninges, brain. Vertebral column, spinal column, spinal cord, protected by the meninges. What is the outermost layer? Dura, Dura means what? Matter means mother. Dura means tough. Mother. What's the next layer? The middle layer? The arachnoid. The arachnoid refers to what? Spider. Spider web appearance. It's arachnida, class. That's my pre med core, zoology. I wanted to work in the zoo. What's the third layer, the innermost layer? PM. PM after. So, which one is found on the surface of the spinal cord in the brain? Which one is found on the surface of the spinal cord in the brain? Which one? Because why? It's on the surface of the brain because it's the innermost layer. Some people during a quiz they get confused. Which one is innermost and outermost? Outermost means what? Outside. Bone, dura, next. Arachnoid, next. Yeah. What do you call the space above the dura? The epidural space. So the epidural space is above the dura. It contains fat. And fat contains a lot of some blood vessels there too, right? Now what about the space below the arachnoid? And why is the subarachnoid space important? It contains what? CSF. 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 Or cerebral spinal fluid. You understand? In other words, the subarachnoid space is found between what? Arachnoid and the PMF. So what do you call the space below the dura? Subdural space. How many of you here were pregnant and were given epidural? You tough? Why? You can't feel anything. What? You cannot feel anything. Why? Did you ever bother to ask yourself, why did I not feel anything? Or in other words, the pain? It's blocked the pain. It blocks the pain. It blocks the pain. How? See what I mean? Anybody? It's wrong to spin a nerve. I mean, no, it's not. Anybody? Yeah. See? So this is where you have to be smart by knowing the answer to all the questions. Remember what I said? How, where, when, why? If you were to cut my sexy booty, and I go like this, quick. You cut here. This is what you're see, going to see. Gray matter contains what? Cell bodies. Gray matter contains what? Cell bodies. So that's our H. What do you call this part here? Horn. Dorsal horn. horn. Like a horn, you know? If this is the dorsal horn, this must be what? Dorsal what? Root. Root. Horn. You understand? Both sides. And then what would this be? Ventral what? Yeah. Ventral horn and ventral what? Root. Can anybody tell me what's another word for dorsal? Uh, posterior. Posterior. Very good. I say this young lady. Gayani, right? Read me loud. Posterior horn. What's another word for ventral therefore? Of course. Don't you love anatomy? It's amazingly what? Lovable. What's another word for ventral horn? Anterior. Anterior horn. Dorsal horn in the gray matter, dorsal root. What do you find in there? 
Sensory or sensory? Sensory. Sensory. What about ventral root, ventral horn? We define here. Motor or motor? Dorsal means at the back. You go like this. So when these women, when you raised your hand and you said you were given epidural anesthesia, what happened here? The drug was given here. Is the dura, arachnoid, and pia? The dura was not even penetrated, was not penetrated, because epi means about the dura. And what did you do? You released what? The anesthetic agent. And where did it go? Sensory or motor? So there is partial sensory loss. There is less pain. So a woman without epidural anesthesia, look at me. <laughs> Your goal is to make what? Have I shown it before? You did. I did? Yeah. Vagina here, vagina here. Push, 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 right? <laughs> Was it painful, Mom? <laughs> yes. I did not have any epidural. Why? With the up, the muscles contract. Is there pain? Yes, there is. I've never been pregnant, so I wouldn't really know. I have made somebody pregnant, my wife. <laughs> Very painful, but we gave one epidural. So a woman without epidural would be like this. <laughs> never again. No more. Nothing, no more babies for me. <laughs> you give them epidural, what happens? <laughs> push. Okay, push. I like this. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I just go. <laughs> I like this. They're going to say it when they have a baby. Was it still painful, right? No, kind no of less pain. For me, they did. So if you were, no, we, we call it pain analog scale, visual scale. And we tell the, the patients. I used to do the patient. Uh, Ma'am, if the pain scale is from zero, and zero means no pain, to 10, 10 being the most painful experience you ever had. <laughs> and they would say, nine. Give them epidural, it went down to what? Maybe two, maybe one, maybe two or three, maybe something, none. So, so amazing what, what people can do for you, okay? We don't want to give too much because it might affect what? Motor and maybe I might stay there for one year. <laughs> because you paralyze the muscles and the baby will not come out. You understand? Okay? Now, now what is the difference between spinal anesthesia? Spinal is what? You penetrate what? The dura. You penetrate the arachnoid and you go where? Into the subarachnoid space. In spinal anesthesia, we release the anesthetic agent where? on the subarachnoid space. If we perform, let's say, major surgery here on the pelvic organs, if we want to remove your ovaries, your uterus, spinal. Now the question is that because you penetrated the dura and the arachnoid, you are now in the subarachnoid space, which contains the cerebrospinal fluid. Can that CSF leak out? Yes. So what do we tell the nurse to do? Tell the patient to lie down what? Flat. Flat on bed. This is the bed here by back. No. Lie down what? Right. Flat for how many hours? 12 hours, 10 to 12. We put a sterile gauze. What will the weight do? Put pressure. It's like when you have a wood, you put pressure to stop the bleeding. Here we put what? Sterile gauze, your weight will put pressure between the bed and you. Your weight and the bed will put pressure to prevent the leakage or what? Should we expect the nurses, therefore, to follow instructions and tell the patients, complete bed rest, ma'am. Who ordered that? Dr. Gamma? What for? To prevent what? Yes, huh? Spinal headache. Uh, are you in a van? Have you ever experienced spinal headaches? Have you ever undergone spinal anesthesia? Now, in spinal taps or lumbar taps, we what? We get fluid. When do you, when you do that? Let's say a patient comes to the emergency room with this. What am I suffering from? Generalized tonic, clonic, upward rolling of the eyeballs. 
seizure with neck rigidity. Oh my God, so will come up in the nursing board exam. In fact, I always tell my nurses, think like a doctor and act like a nurse. That's how you pass the exam. You have to know the knowledge, get the knowledge of the doctor. I'm not saying I'm going to give you my knowledge, but maybe. When a patient comes with emergency room with seizures, high grade fever, with very neck, rigid, neck rigidity, or what we call nuca, nuca with neck, N-U-C-H-A-L, think of meningitis. Are we going to perform a spinal tap or lumbar tap? Who will perform the procedure? The doctor. Who will assist the doctor? A smart nurse from West Coast. We, we, we only hire people from West Coast. They're smart. And you are smart because you are one. Students of West Coast, the best in the West. <laughs> After doing it, so we get a spinal needle, put it there, remove the CSF, there's a manometer measuring the pressure. We get a sterile, why sterile? Because we do not want any contamination. Instead of clean container, we use a sterile container, send it to the lab and grow for any what, bacterial organism. So if it's what? You can tell if it's meningitis, to buy viral meningitis or bacterial meningitis, because why? Like my wife works at Cedar Sinai, we send them the specimen, and they can grow. They feed them with what? Blood agar, feed them, and let them grow, let them grow, let them grow. After one day, oh my God, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, Gamococcus, <laughs> or Pseudomonas, aeruginosa, Neisseria meningitidis, or meningococcemia, the worst kind. Okay. And they can tell which one is what, what kind of drug is best. Resistant to penicillin, sensitive to septacidine, we do not give one. Penicillin because the bacteria is resistant to that. If, we, if it's sensitive to septacidine, the third generation cephalosporin, yes we did. So we are men and women of science. Once I gave the drug, what happened to the fever? The frequency of seizures will also lessen. And are we, are we going to give anti-seizure drugs? Yes, we could, right? You understand, class? Are we going to let them lie down flat in bed for the next 10 or 12 hours again because in spinal anesthesia, we put the anesthesia. In spinal tap, we get the fluid. And the best site will be where? Iliac crest, iliac crest means what? L4, L5 level. Why? Because spinal cord ends where? L1. So why do we injure it at L4, L5? We want to avoid what? Spinal cord. What happens if the stupid doctor in inserts the needle at L1? You could hit the spinal cord, patient becomes paraplegic, 100 million malpractice. And it will also sue the nurse. And everybody, but of course, the most important person will be the hospital. <laughs> you have there more money, right? Okay. Now, this meninges, dura arachnoid pia, the pia oh, on the spinal nerves, spinal cord is longer than the spinal column. That's why it ends at L1, L2. Now, what do you call the spinal nerve that goes down into the from the, what is the last part of the spinal cord? It's called corners one. The last part of the spinal cord is corners medullaris, or the terminal end, corners, C-O-N-U-S, medullaris, M-E-D-U-L-L-A-R-I-S. And from there, the lumbar sacral spinal nerves would look like the tail of a horse. Cauda equina. That is made up of what? Lumbar sacral spinal nerve. Lumbar sacral spinal nerve would look like the tail of the horse. Now, in the middle of the tail, there is a whitish layer of pia matter, remember, dura arachnoidea, that extends all the way down, that connects the, if this were the brain, spinal cord like this, this is pia, right? It's on the surface, pia. The pia extends like this. What is that called? It begins with another F. You're the man. So what is this therefore made of? Fibrous tissue. Arachnoid, which is connected tissue, right? Matter. Now remember, arachnoid, I'm sorry, pia. My goodness, how can I be stupid? I'm sorry, pia. Then arachnoid, the dura, goes down here at the level of S2. This is L1, right? Mm -hmm. S2 here, the dura joins the pia on both sides, so dura, pia in the middle, dura on the sides, dura and pia joints at S2 level to become the what? Coccygeal what? Ligament. Ligament. 
And where do you think this coccygeal ligament attached to? <laughs> Coccyx, of course. Oh my God, don't you love anatomy? <laughs> the coccyx, why? To prevent the cord from what? Jumping up and down. So if I go like this, yippee. It protects your spinal cord because it's anchored to the coccyx. So coccygeal ligament is made up of pia and dura. But this one is just purely pia. It's made up, it's called phylo terminale. The pia together with dura at S2 becomes coccygeal ligament. Attached to where? Coccyx. Remember the word of coccyx, table. Mm -hmm. Now what is part of the pia here paired? Pia. Pia. Attached to the dura on the sides. And when you look at it in the cadaver specimen that we have at UCLA, it looks like the teeth. Mm -hmm. Hmm? It's paired. Pia attached to the cord. Uh, I'm sorry, the dura. Pia to the dura. Pia to the dura. What it does, it prevents the cord from moving from side to side. So if I go like this. <laughs> It prevents movement of the cord side to side. Coccygeal ligament prevents over what? Coxygeal. Up and down movement. What prevents movement side to side? What does denti mean? When you have a problem with your teeth, who do you go to? Dentist. Dentist. And what is the name of the ligament? Denticulate. Don't you love anatomy again? <laughs> this is exciting. Denticulate from the word dentist. And you look at this, it looks like what? Like a teeth. Like, a, like this. You understand? So what do you call the end of the spinal cord? Corners medullaris. We've talked about phylum terminale. We've talked about cardiac equilibrium of spinal nerve roots. We've talked about dorsal versus ventral. Now I tell you this. When you have, have you heard of polio? Remember? Mm -hmm. Who is FDR? Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He suffered from polio. The virus attached what? What, is it? what do you think the virus will attack? The dorsal horn or the ventral horn or the anterior horn? The anterior horn cells or the ventral horn. What is found there? Motor. Patients with polio will have paralysis from the neck, if depending on the cervical cord or Paraplegia, like in the case of what? FDR. He has had to be on a wheelchair. Now, if it affects the cervical spinal cord, you cannot breathe on your own because it will affect your diaphragm, innervated by the phrenic nerve. Can you breathe on your own? No. But if you look and Google it, they call it iron lung. In the 1920s and 30s, all these kids were placed inside this big white thing to breathe for them. Okay. Do you understand, class? Now, the, the, the last chapter is actually just dealing purely with what? Nerve tracks. You don't have to memorize them, but it's very simple. If you pinch me here, what kind of track is that? Sensory or motor? Sensory. 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 Goes in the spinal, sensory spinal nerves, so spinal cord, enters here, and then what? Goes where? The cortex. It goes into the medulla oblongata, which is the last part. It cr crosses to the opposite side, goes into the parietal. You will learn this next week. It's called the parietal lobe. The primary sensory cortex. What about, what is a, so what's another name for sensory tracts? Ascending. Afferent. Sensory nerve tracts, afferent. Ascending because they ascend to the central nervous system. What is descending? Efferent. Descent, efferent motor. Example, if I pinch you, I feel the pain, in the temporal or parietal lobe, and what does the frontal lobe have? The frontal lobe is the motor cortex area. So it tells what? Your muscles to contract. So it sends a nerve impulse from the left, goes to the right, left, and what does it do? It crosses to the opposite side in the medulla oblongata, starts to go down to the right side, so it controls the right part of the body, opposite. So if you say painful, the body, okay, remove your head. Unless you're masochistic or, said, you know. How many of you love pain? Okay, very good. Now, 
Nobody wants pain. Can you imagine if you have a toothache? Oh my God, I love this toothache. Oh. <laughs> or you step on something sharp. Oh my God, I like this. <laughs> In fact, pain is a reminder that there's something wrong. Like if you have right lower quadrant pain, it means that there could be appendicitis, right? The right upper quadrant, the bladder pain, okay? Or liver pain with jaundice, right? Okay, is that clear? So the idea here is that, unfortunately, to talk about the nerve tracts, you should talk about the brain. Unfortunately, they made the brain next week in chapter 16, 17, 18, and they're already talking about the nerve tracts, okay? I'll give you a five-minute break. When you come back, we will have the midterm exam. So you know it's going to be covered from 1 to 15, except for 12. I already gave you the study guide for everything, right? Five-minute break. Go to the restroom. Thank you.